Today we're shooting something pretty straightforward. It is a product photography shot for this right here. This is a prenatal supplement and the client needs to have photographs of this container and the contents inside of it to match those of the very high end big pharmaceutical companies that they're going up against. The stuff that my client's been making on her iPhone just aren't quite cutting it, as you might imagine. So we're gonna be photographing these here. Very simple, seamless white background, nice big soft light. And of course, I'll be shooting tethered using the new Lumix app. Let's get started. I was walking by the ocean, feeling all emotion. When she came right up next to me, I got caught up in the moment. Felt like we were frozen, like it was literally meant to be. The time stood still right there. So I've got my white seamless set up, and you may have noticed in the time lapse that I uh, had to kind of rig something up. My regular seamless bar is being used there, and I didn't want to rig up a new one to the one that's hanging off the wall, so just a pole and a couple of C-stands and off we go. Anyway, uh, it's a white background, white product. The photo is actually ultimately the, the close-up one is going to be cut out, so it's just completely no background. That's what they want. That's what you find on, on um, Amazon. But we also need some product shots that are with the pills out, the packet of pills and so on, and those aren't going to be cut out. So we want to make the background as pure, white, seamless, and clean as possible, obviously minimizing editing time if I can not actually have to cut it out and just have the perfect pure white background on its own, even better, but uh, that remains to be seen. Now I'm going to probably shoot this with a pretty long lens, I'm going to stick the camera pretty far back just to get that nice compression effect. Being a big bottle there, if we get too close and it gets kind of fat looking, it's not going to look right. So I'll probably put a longer lens on there and stick it back a little bit. And uh, that's where we're at right now. So I've swapped out the light, not because of the modifier. I had on there the Apollo Orb from Westcott, which I absolutely love. Uh, and I've replaced it with this one, which is a Profoto softbox, which is saying three foot Octa. But it's not because of the modifier. They're pretty much the same. There is a different quality because the light bounces into the back of the Apollo and wraps around. This one just shoots straight through. But for this shot, it probably wouldn't matter, but that's not why. The reasoning is because I have a 300 watt light, in Profoto light in the Apollo, and it's kind of a pain to get it out and swap it out. Um, but I wanted to put the 600 on here, not because I needed more light, but because I needed less. See, the 300 only allows me to go down to a quarter power. That's so 300 divided by two is 150, divided by 75, right? That's it. Whereas the 600 will go all the way down to 16th power. So actually, even though it's double to start, it goes down to half of the light output that that one does. And I just needed less light. I had the camera stopped down to F9 at, at ISO 1, uh, 125, and it's just, it's too much. I need, I need less light. So hopefully this will do it, and, uh, and we'll see where it goes from here. And now I know I'll never let this ever, ever end in somewhere other than next to me. Okay, the light's looking pretty good on the product now. I've got, because the light's coming from the side, obviously one side's brighter than the other, and I do want a bit of a balance there. I don't want it to be totally even. I do want it to be a little bit darker on one side, but not much, just enough to give it depth. And so right now it's a little bit too dark. So I could add another light, but that seems like overkill. So I'm gonna utilize these little guys. These things are pretty cool. They're from a company called Lightrite. If you go to lightrightreflector.com, we'll put a link down below, you'll see these things. And essentially they are silver, cardboard with these clever little magnetic strips. So you just fold them up to create your triangle shape and then you position it by just sliding it up and down that tilts it up and down. And there's a bunch of different sizes, little tiny ones, really big ones. So I'm gonna take one of these guys, position it next to it and just get that into just the right position to cast just enough light into the area that I want it to and hopefully we'll fill up the other side. Reflectors didn't really work out so well. Um, it was filling in the light as it should. However, it was also creating a little glare, a little silver strip on the bottle itself because the bottle's a little bit reflective. So that didn't work. So I just ditched that pretty quickly. I could have added a second light to balance out the other side, but I decided let's just make it easy. I didn't really want to set up a second light. Just bring the main light more in front of it. It's pretty much straight on. It's just a little bit off. Uh, we have some nice shadowing going down the sides. And so overall, I think this look is, is 
just fine. It looks great. So now I've also hooked up, you may have seen the laptop, so I'm shooting tethered. And there's a really cool advantage to shooting tethered, other than the obvious, we get to see the image nice and big, we can really check critical exposure, I can look at it with nice big levels, I can zoom in, make sure everything's good, I can play with my highlights and shadows and really make sure everything's in there. But there's one other really neat thing. Let me show this to you here real quick. All right, check out over here, if I go to my aperture settings, I can control the aperture, but look at all the options that I have. So there's f6, f6.1, f6.2, 6.3, 6.4. This is way, way more finite control than I have on the camera. If we go back to the camera and just look at the LCD back here, and if I go ahead and spin the, spin the aperture here, you see our, our aperture settings there, f8, 71, 63, 56, 50, and so on. And now let's go back over to here. Of course, that is now updated to show 56, since that's what we just set the camera to. I'm going to go ahead and change that to, let's just say, 5.8. Now go back to here, and there's that 5.8 setting. So we have the ability to go much more finite on the aperture, which is pretty awesome. When you're trying to get that absolutely perfect exposure, those stops that are in there may not be quite enough. So this allows us to get really, really precise with it. This is a neat little turn of events. The packets are quite reflective. They've got this silver back to them. And so as these move around in the light, you get a lot of glare off of them. And so I needed to cut through that glare somehow. So I tried a few different things. I started off with a polarizer filter, which helped, but didn't get rid of it completely. Plus it changed the light in the background. And of course I would have had to bring up the light on the front, which would be fine, but I don't think I would have gotten it to match. And I really wanted the background, even though I might be cutting them out, I don't think I'm gonna have to. Wanted it all to match. So this wasn't worth it. So I got rid of that. And I started playing with the angle, tilting it forward, backwards, and so on. And uh, at one point you may have seen in the time-lapse, I even turned off the overhead lights just to make sure I wasn't getting glare from that. And I wasn't. And ultimately what I ended up doing was tilting it down, tilting it forward, because of course the light's coming from here. If I tilt it forward enough, then this glare doesn't happen. But you can't just prop something up forward, it's going to fall over. So let me show you how I did this. So there's the packet leaning against the pregenesis bottle. But if we look around to the back, you'll see a sneaky little piece of scotch tape holding that up. So that allowed me to, since it was attached at the top, go down to the bottom and simply move it forward or backward, tilt it forward or backward as needed. And that ended up getting the shot. Now I've moved the camera here as well. I've also got a new lens on here. I've got the macro lens on because we needed a close up of the pills. And here's something that's really cool. Let me jump into this screen here. Even without the reflection on it, you still have this plastic over the pills. And so there's a little bit of a haze going on. And so I found that playing with clarity did a little bit of work, a little bit of help. But then I discovered that playing with dehaze worked really, really well. And if I dehaze it a little bit too much, then the image looks great, but it got really dark. So I ended up overexposing the shot. So here's the shot originally. This is a raw file, obviously. And it's clearly overexposed, but as I bring the dehaze up, you can see how we can really cut through that glare. And that's a little bit too high there, but get it up to maybe somewhere around there. And then maybe play with the black levels a little bit as well. The dehaze also tends to oversaturate a little bit, so I pulled that down too. But this overexposing and then dehazing has allowed me to get a really nice view of these pills here, even though they're inside of the plastic bag. So anyone who may have not shot tethered before, this is one of those really cool examples of why tethering is so awesome and so powerful, especially for this type of a shoot. Not only can I see that the image is totally sharp everywhere through and really, really closely check composition, but allows me to even go into Lightroom and start playing, or whatever app you're using, and start playing with the image. See if it works better if you bring the exposure down and then bring up the shadows in post, or if you do something like I did here, overexpose it quite dramatically. It was probably an, uh, at least a stop or so overexposed, but then bringing up that dehaze really made a huge difference. This is one of the great reasons that tethering is so fantastically awesome. <laughs> Okay, so the last shot that I need to get is a top down. This is the sample that the client sent over, just a simple top down of the pills, and then I'm gonna go into Photoshop and add text to describe what they are. So this means, of course, I have to change the entire setup now. I have inverted the tripod head here. Um, this is a great way to be able to shoot top down, so without having to worry about 
trying to stand over the camera, stand over the subject, hold the camera perfectly straight, uh, or have a tripod where the head leans forward, angles forward, which I don't have, just inverting the center post on the tripod can be a really great way, really easy way, to make sure that you can point the camera straight down. Now, this tripod head, um, unfortunately, the way this one's designed, because uh, it's not really meant to do this, of course, it tops out tilting um, at about there. So it doesn't point straight down, but it will, in this configuration, point straight up, which means, of course, that what I need to do is take the camera off the plate and reverse the plate. So it's technically on backwards, but obviously that doesn't really matter at all. So we'll just flip this guy around and put this back on the tripod. And there we go. So now my camera is pointing straight down. Put this back on the table and away we go. And that's all she wrote. So one last little thing I had to do when I was photographing the pills straight down, because one of them is white against a white background and that white pill, that white powder is wrapped in a clear uh, gelatin cap, whatever it's called. The edge of it, one edge of it was getting lost against the white. And so what I ended up doing was taking just a little something black, this is a little piece of foam, I don't know what this is from, just a little black thing. And I set it just out of view so that the light would have something, so have something kind of, not to, re, I guess, kind of to reflect on it. Just added that little extra edge that I needed in there, giving me that definition against the background and finishing the shot. So that's all there is to it. Pretty straightforward at the end of the day. Uh, just a couple of shots of this product against a white seamless. But again, having it on the laptop, being able to shoot tethered, was absolutely huge for this and made this project a lot easier. Because frankly, if I was doing this not tethered, I would absolutely be running back and forth between the camera and the laptop, pulling out the card, ingesting them into Lightroom to check them out, look at them closely, make sure I got it, back and forth, back and forth. So this, without a doubt, saved a lot of time and made sure that at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the shoot, that I knew that I had everything I needed. So I got a white seamless setup. It's funny, I'm, <laughs> that's all right, <laughs> sorry. <laughs>